I'm working on something. I might not be in prison right now, but I'm working on something. I might not have any money right now, but I'm working on something. I may be a student at school living off of Roman noodles, but I'm working on something. I may have to study while you go to the basketball game, but I'm working on something. I may not get to do all the fun things that you get to do, but I'm working on something. I'm in the gym because I'm working on something. I'm on the field running because I'm working on something. I'm reading books at 2 o'clock in the morning because I'm working on something. I'm exercising because I'm working on something. Anytime you're working on something, you got to go through a period of suffering. And if you lose over here, you're going to win over there. Who am I talking to? This? Get off of Instagram and snap and get off all these blogs and get into something that can really, really move your life forward. So when you spend so much time in the blog world, the Instagram world, the chat world, you're wasting valuable time. If I was young and I had what you have, I had no technology growing up, nothing. You couldn't download a book. You had to go to the library, find the book, and hope somebody ain't told a page out that you want to read. That's what it used to be. Y'all got Google. You can Google anything. You all have stuff at your fingertips that can make you great. But if you could combine your technology with your parents and your grandparents' work ethic, you could be rich, man. But you cannot erase the work ethic part. There is no getting around. Ain't no elevator to the top. You got to take the stands. The elevator don't go to the top, man. Not in the world of success. Y'all got to start getting gritty, man. I hate it when I see young people wasting their time, wasting all this technology got, just sitting around in this world that's been created for you, that everything is instant. How you rely on technology, and it's a help to you. But young people, you got to get gritty, man. You got to develop some dog in you. You got to understand, you can't Google success. Go Google it. I've seen stuff hopefully you'll never see. And I've seen some things I hope one day you do see. But go Google exposure. It ain't going to take you nowhere. I've been around the world, man. I have a life of convenience now. But in order to get the life of convenience, you got to have a very uncomfortable life. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Stop trying to do everything the short way. Stop trying to figure out the easy way. I got news for you, man. It's not happening, young people. You got to get messed up sometimes. You got to get dirty. You got to get your feelings hurt. You got to get disappointed. You got to get told no. But at least then, when I see somebody try and I tell them no, I try to at least give them something else. See, I'm not going to hand you a fish sandwich. I'll teach you how to fish. See, most people want it easy. See, if you easy come, easy what? Easy go. I was hoping that circumstances outside would change. Then here's what I found out. It isn't going to change. So then my question was, if it isn't going to change, how will my life ever change? And here's what my teacher taught me. When you change, when you change, everything will change for you. When you get better, everything will get better for you. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. See if you can find some ways to multiply your value to the market. And he said, your income will immediately start to change. You don't have to change the economy. You don't have to change countries. You don't have to change circumstances out there. All you've got to do is look within and see if you can change yourself for the better. And as you change, things will start to change for you. The real problem, which, by the way, no one ever talks about, is that everywhere we look at society, 
We celebrate victimhood. We are no longer celebrating people who put in the work. We are no longer celebrating people who overcome. Instead, we are celebrating people who have the saddest story, who suffered the most. Well, let me tell you something, guys. You can compete for that your entire life, and nobody's going to bring you a fucking thing except a couple likes and a couple comments that people don't mean. The real winners are still and always will be the people who aren't immune from obstacles, but instead see obstacles as an opportunity to get better. They see this as the path to winning, and they are right. The only people that are going to win are going to be the people who recognize the opportunity to improve when they get punched in the face, which happens to all of us. So if that's you, if you're sitting there at home and you're posting sad story after sad story after sad story, realize that that's all you're ever going to fucking have. And I would suggest that instead of seeing life through the perspective of who's going to be the biggest winner of the losers, start being who's going to be the biggest winner. There's nobility in that. There is nobility in overcoming hardship. There is nobility in overcoming obstacles. There is nobility in creating a story that other people are inspired by. You know why? Because it shows people what's possible. It shows people who are coming after you in this life what they can achieve. Our obligation to this planet is to make people behind us better. Do more. Let me explain what I mean by do more. I remember I was in an office. I was brand spanking new. It's 2002, 2003. And Saturdays, we were all young, and there was a bunch of pretty girls in the office. And everybody Saturday night wanted to go to Dublin's. Everybody wanted to go club on Saturday night. And I was in the office, 5 o'clock. Everyone's leaving. Six, two people left. Seven, I'm staying. No one's there. Eight, I'm staying. Nine, I'm staying. Ten, I'm staying. Everyone's gone. Eleven, I'm staying. By that time, I'm so wiped out. I'm not going to the club. I'm going home, reading a book, going to sleep. Boring to you, right? It's boring to you, right? Now, fast forward and ask me what places I've partied and have had fun with. You won't even believe half the stories if I told you. You would say there's no way in the world you've partied with prime ministers and governors and senators and billionaires and all this other stuff because I didn't want to just get too excited about Dublin. There was a time it was exciting to me. Again, how big is your purpose? How long will you put your activity with the efforts? And then does it match the standard of behavior that you want to put up? So do more. If a person leaves at 6, you leave at 8. If a person makes 100 calls a day, you make 200 calls a day. If somebody practices three hours, you practice five hours. If somebody practices six hours, you practice eight hours. If someone reads two books, you read four books. Just do a little bit more. Do a little bit more. Subscribe to the now mentality. Subscribe to the now mentality. We'll call them tomorrow. Uh-uh. We'll call them now. Well, what are we going to wait till tomorrow? Call them right now. What are you talking? Let's call them right now. Do it now mentality. Work ethic. There's a part of it. Now. Do it now. Not tomorrow. Now. Now. Okay? Procrastinate tomorrow, next day, three hours, five hours. Let's do it right now. Don't fall for the work smart only concept. For our work week is work smart. I get it. I respect it. Some people like that. Nothing big has ever been built without working very hard. And I'm talking very hard. Very hard. It's Friday night right now while we're shooting this. Everybody's gone in the office. Everyone's going out to dinner. All day. I just got back from Burbank, California. I got a bunch of other travels that's coming up. We're here right now in the office. Why are we doing this? Well, Pat, how do you find the time to shoot these episodes? You never miss a Tuesday and a Thursday episode of Valuetainment. Because some nights on Friday night, I want to go home and kick it and relax. And I don't. And we shoot these episodes because we're supposed to come to you Tuesdays and Thursdays. And do you realize... From the moment we said Tuesdays and Thursdays, we've never, ever done an episode that we've missed on Tuesday or Thursday. Why? 
part of commitment. It's part of showing up. So when people tell me, but I'm sick, I have this, I have that, then this is not your game yet. Then this is not your game yet, okay? Cut distractions. Cut distractions, very simple. You gotta cut distractions. You're still gonna have some distractions in your life, but you gotta cut the distractions that you can cut. Absolute focus. Absolute focus. This is tiring. You gotta train your mind to be focused. It's a muscle. You gotta train your mind to be focused. You can do it. So when people tell me all these rhetoric, I need to take this medicine, I need to take that medicine, stop. You're looking for an out. Stop making excuses that you can't stay focused. Practice it. It's a muscle. Stay focused. Have a to-do list. Work ethic has to do with to-do list. What needs to get done next? Eat right. Work ethic requires energy for you to be able to last a long time. Stamina, efficiency. For you to be able to go and you, you have the, you're not getting tired by four o'clock if you eat right. Cut the fat. Similar to cut the distractions, but cut the fat. There's a lot of fat. It's work you don't need to do. It's work that somebody else can do. It's work that makes you feel excited that you got stuff done. Not necessary. Didn't grow your business. You just want to go home saying you work hard, but you didn't get nothing done. There are days that you work and you go home and say, what happened today to my business? How did the value of my business increase today? It didn't, but I feel like I worked 10 hours. This one guy told me, I'm at the office every damn day, Patrick. He's screaming in my face. You're telling me I don't work that hard. How the hell can you be at the office 60 hours a week and in a month you only sell four of them? You tell me how. Tell me. You're telling me you're working hard. What do you mean you're working hard? You ain't working hard. Just because you're at the office doesn't mean you're working hard. Man, cut the fat. Turn off the Facebook. Turn off Snapchat. You're not focused. You need to cut the fat. Hey there, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about the scary work ethic. You know, the kind of work ethic that might seem intimidating or overwhelming at first. Let's face it, achieving your goals are dreams, requires hard work and dedication. It's not always going to be easy and there will be times when you feel like giving up. But here are the things those who are willing to put in the extra effort push thought the fear and embrace the silence are the ones who ultimately succeed. So if you are feeling scared of the amount of work ahead of you, remember that it's okay to feel the way, it's okay to be intimidated by the amount of effort reverse, but don't let that fear hold you back and instead use it as fuel to profile you for Imagine you how amazing it will feel when you look back and see how far you have come because you did not let fear stop you. Embrace the scary work ethic because that's where real growth and success happen. Keep pushing, keep working hard and remember that you are capable of achieving incredible things. Stay motivated and keep grinding. You have got this.